Welcome to Brainstorm, where we give you a glimpse into the world of science for this Monday, February 20th, 2012. Our top story is exciting news from the world of medicine. Scientists from the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia and the University of Pennsylvania have successfully improved conditions in people with congenital blindness using gene therapy. And you did hear correctly, this was a human trial, and actually the second of this therapy. Back in 2009, the first trial involved 12 patients, some quite young, and was only done in one eye. Now, this condition is caused by the mutation in a gene that produces an enzyme necessary for light receptors. The reason this has been done one eye at a time was in case the gene therapy provoked an immune response. There was even more concern about the second eye causing an immune response, but after some additional animal testing, it was deemed safe for the second eye. And the results are promising. Obviously, the study needs to be done with more people over a longer period before anything can be said definitively, but it's very encouraging and paves the way for similar gene therapies. We now turn to the world of neuroscience. Researchers from the University of Washington have tested using quantum dots to manipulate neurons. Now, before we get into what the hell a quantum dot is, let's talk about other methods of neuron manipulation, some of which we've discussed on Brainstorm. There's the classic deep brain stimulation with electrodes, optogenetics, which uses genetically engineered proteins sensitive to light, and similarly, using metallic particles that heat up when exposed to a magnetic field. Back to quantum dots. They're essentially nanometer scale particles of semiconductor. Light excites the electrons, causing the surrounding to be negatively charged. Initially, these dots were tested next to prostate cancer cells. The generated negativity triggered some of the cell's channel proteins. This was then tested with neurons and was able to make them fire, which has implications with many conditions that involve irregular nerve activity. In practical applications, the quantum dots would be modified with additional molecules, allowing them to attach to particular neurons. Obviously, like with optogenetics, a concern is how to expose these dots to light while they're in the brain. Until that's figured, this method could still have potential restoring sight by attaching the dots to damaged retinas. Our final story is an update from the field of genetics, more specifically, a study of epigenetics by a team in Australia. For those who don't know, epigenetics is the growing study of how genes are expressed and what factors control them. This particular study looked at diet as a factor in a mouse population. Recently, it's been shown that epigenetic traits can actually be inherited, similarly but not exactly like genetic ones. So, to test exactly how this might work, a population of mice was fed a heavily supplemented diet. Needless to say, the mice became very slim, and after five generations, the number of healthy mice began to increase, implying an inherited benefit. And this benefit remained with the mice even after being put on a normal diet, until three generations later when it began wearing off. Now, there was a particular obesity-related gene being monitored throughout this whole thing, and while the physical characteristics of the mice changed, the gene did not mutate. Obviously, this has implications for human obesity and similar health trends. Good news is, it appears epigenetic changes are relatively short-lived, so a few generations of healthier choices could really turn public health around. That's the bad news, too. Well, hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please consider subscribing and be sure to check the links in the video description.